Uh, good evening, everyone. Uh, th thank you for spending some time with us. Uh, for the, I hope you'll be attending the fourth session of the Ramp Up Learning Series. By the way, my name is Zandra Nicolas. I'm the Developer Evangelist of Microsoft Philippines. With me um, is um, Edu Lorenzo. He's our Microsoft MVP for ASP.NET. He's also um, currently our ISV uh, Developer Evangelist. And we also have John Lim Hap in the crowd. He's our MVP for uh, C Sharp. He will be delivering the third session on uh, the Ramp Up Learning Series. Um, I hope you guys uh, already have a clear idea on what this Ramp Up Learning Session is for. It's actually targeted to um, uh, developers who still are using Visual Basic 6 application and are deciding whether or not to migrate their VB6 application to Visual Basic.net. So for the first session, what we're going to discuss would be the different considerations whether um, uh, you're going to upgrade or mi migrate your existing VB6 application to Visual Basic.net. And then we will also be presenting the different options for upgrading. Third, we will gi uh, be giving you a general recommendation whether your application falls under a certain architecture and whether a complete rewrite is recommended on your end, um, a partial upgrade or um, no, uh, no upgrade at, um, at all. Then uh, Edu here will be giving you a demonstration on the conversion wizard. And if we still have time after the Q&A process, we're going to um, give you a preview on Visual Studio 2010 Lite Switch that allows you to create applications uh, that mainly include operations like crude without actually um, uh, performing any code or performing any uh, programming at all. You only have to set several properties, but that particular feature is only available in Visual Studio 2010. So I hope you're in the right um, room. So uh, the first one would be uh, a discussion on how you're going to decide where, whether to upgrade and migrate. Kanina nakita niyo, umiikot kami ni Ed. Tinatanong namin kung saan kayo galing na company and uh, the current applications that you're currently using. Again, uh, because we just wanted to make sure that uh, all of the sessions that we have lined up for you would really help you in deciding whether or not you're going to do full upgrade or partial upgrade of your Visual Basic 6 application to Visual Basic.net. So, uh, there are different um, factors that you have to consider whether you're going to migrate or you're going to upgrade your Visual Basic 6 application to VB.net. Number one would be you'd have to um, weigh the different advantages that you're going to gain if you will be if you have decided to migrate VB6 application to Visual Basic.net. One of the advantages is if you're going to upgrade your Visual Basic 6 application to Visual Basic.net, you can actually maximize um, the different advantages of the .NET framework, including performance, scalability, and we all know there are a lot of advantages if you go if you already have code in uh, object-oriented programming language like uh, .NET. Number two would be the cost incurred. So depending on your decision whether you're going to have a full migration or a partial migration, definitely merong um, costs um, in hand. So actually, the consideration will be dependent on time, effort, and ultimately yung finance. Last, of course, yung ease of upgrade. Again, depending if you're going to do full upgrade or partial upgrade. So there are different advantages that you can gain if you're going, if you have decided to migrate your application to Visual Basic.net. Number one would be scalability. In what sense? If you're going to use ADO.net or um, ASP.net, you will um, actually benefit from um, allowing your, your application to be scalable. For one, um, ADO.net um, has support for disconnected architecture. Thus, it actually reduces the overhead in terms of uh, multiple applications connected simultaneously to the database. Before I continue, anybody here who are already familiar with ADO.NET? O yung hindi pa familiar sa ADO.NET? 
ADO.net is the successor of ADO. So if you are maintaining your Visual Basic 6 application, you might be using either ADO, yung active uh, data objects. You also might be using uh, data access object or remote data access objects. Sino yung gumagamit ng tatlo? ADO, RDO, and DAO. In terms of connecting your VB6 application to the database, what are you using? Kailangan daw ng giveaway para sumagot sila. <laughs> uh, later po, we're going to give giveaway. So, are you guys using ADO.net already? I think for some of you who already have applications on .NET, you should be using ADO.net. Kasi sayang, if you're already um, on .NET and you're not using ADO.net, hindi nyo nagagamit yung advantages of ADO.net. Number one. Um, there's a difference between a data set and a data reader if, you, if you're using ADO.net. Difference between the two, if you're using um, data set, um, pwede yung forward, backward scanning of data. So I can get data from the database and cache it on the memory kung saan naka-install yung application nyo. Tapos nun, puputuli na yung connection. The only time that your application will connect to the database pag mayroong update, yun yung advantage ni dataset na nasa loob ng ADO.net. Uh, ADO.net was actually introduced in Visual Studio 2003. So, um, again, the, the main difference niya between ADO and A, uh, if you're going to compare it to ADO, again, ADO.net allows disconnected architecture. Why would you need disconnected architecture in the first place? For one, again, nililesen mo yung overhead in terms of the memory na kinakain ng connection ng application mo to the database. So, yung application mo will only connect to the database kung meron lang updates doon sa table na nasa loob ng data set. Are you guys still with me? Okay. Now, if you're wondering, what about my ADO... Um, data access layer, or yung data access layer nyo na may ADO pa rin, is it supported in .NET? Again, for those of you who are um, already on .NET, yes, it is still supported in ADO.NET, but for DAO, yung data access object, yung RDO, kailangan i-convert nyo siya sa ADO.NET. That's a recommendation. But if you're using ADO, you can still use ADO. But if you're using ADO, you won't be able to use disconnected architecture, particularly data set. Now, part also of um, the ADO.NET API is the data reader that is actually built for performance. If you're going to compare a data reader to uh, a data set, mas mabilis si data reader. Kasi si data reader read only lang siya forward only mode. So, kuha siya sa database and then the display niya. So again, in terms of sino dito yung gumagamit pa ng DHTML at saka ng ActiveX? Wala na naman. Okay, good. Uh, kasi in terms of uh, web forms or web application created in DHTML, that is no longer supported in .NET. So if you have DHTML, if you have ActiveX um, application that uses ActiveX, you'd have to convert that to web forms, which um, in the case of .NET, yun na yung ASP.NET. But ASP.NET still uses Visual Basic .NET dun sa code behind niya. Now, another thing about scalability, uh, most of you are familiar with uh, state management. Okay. Now, one good thing about ASP.NET, in terms of session uh, management, yung state variables nyo, you can actually create uh, a database, which you call the ASP state. Ilalagay nyo siya sa isang dedicated server. And then the session variables can be um, shared among the different servers in a web farm. That is kung ganun kalaki yung application. Now, performance, again, as I've mentioned, if you already are um, using ADO.net, uh, build for, for, for performance si data reader and also si uh, a, a data set within ADO.net. What about deployment? Sino dito yung naka-encounter yun ng DLL hell? 
sa Visual Basic 6. I mean, DLL help. Okay. Uh, nor normally, if you're going, if you have a Visual Basic 6 application that uses COM components, if you're going to, de uh, you created that on a different operating system, and then you're going to deploy that on an, um, another operating system, di ba, meron pa kayong kailangan ayusin sa registry. Kasi meron siyang dependency dun sa previous operating system. With the different deployment options in .NET, for instance, Xcopy, wala ka ng problema in managing the DLL conflicts. Why? In .NET, we already have introduced um, the concept called assembly. So, yung mga applications mo, pag dineploy mo siya, yung mismong deployment package, naka-assembly na yun. When we talk about assembly, all the metadata, lahat ng dependency file, para yung application mo mag-run from one operating system to another operating system, nasa assembly na yun. So, self-describing na siya. Also, if you'll be using .NET, there are a lot of deployment options that you can use. Isa yung uh, deployment, I'm sure familiar din kayo dun sa Windows Installer Project. And then we have the set out and deployment project kay .NET. Plus, of course, uh, you have an access to the, to the rich base uh, classes. If you're using Visual Studio .NET 2003, ikot lang ako ah. You're using Visual Studio .NET 2003. Mm -hmm. The .NET framework is 1.1. If you're using 2005, the .NET framework is 2.0. 2008, you have 3.0 and 3.5. 2010, you have .NET framework 4.0. So, nagkakaiba sila in terms of, one, yung version ng .NET framework. Bakit ba may different versions? Kasi nadagdagan at nadagdagan ng class libraries habang nag-a-upgrade yung versions niya. Second, in terms of debugging, better debugging in uh, Visual Basic .NET, how can you solve DLL conflicts kay VB.NET again by using Xcopy? And it's easier for you to maintain uh, your .NET application compared to your Visual Basic application because of the concept of classes. Yung .NET developer dito, um, any idea about classes? Why do you need to... Um, utilize the different advantages offered by object-oriented PL. Sorry. For reusability. Normally, um, if you have classes, since yung interdependency nila hindi mataas, pag nag-scale yung application mo, you'll only be changing one classes na hindi affected yung ibang classes. So, if you have a Visual Basic application, where in the design of your Visual Basic application is modular, mas madali na siyang i-upgrade to Visual Basic .NET. Kasi what you're going to do, bawat modules ng VB6 application mo, you will only convert that to a class in Visual Basic .NET. Any questions so far? May question, may additional information? Are you, tama naman, uh, you're in the right session, no? Guys? Okay. Later, wag kayong mag-alala. Meron, meron tayong dinner. <laughs> I know you guys are hungry kasi yung iba galing pa yata sa malayo. Okay. In terms of the cost uh, incurred, again, uh, depende yun. If you are going to have a full migrate, definitely yung time uh, time that will be spent on development, malaki lang yun eh. Depende din naman sa laki no? application nyo. Now, there are also um, certain Visual Basic 6 application na kailangan ng redesign. When we talk about redesign, you're not, uh, we're not talking about VB6 application na in-upgrade sa Visual Basic .NET. Kasi if you already have tried the upgrade wizard before, which is available with Visual Studio 2003, and the conversion wizard right now, uh, that's, I mean, that's built in with Visual Studio 2010, may kita mo, i-upgrade niya lang yung kaya niyang i-upgrade. But there are